one nothing Dusto. We'll see whose prediction comes through. So yeah, pistol round getting underway. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, we have ourselves a match to talk about something to get excited about and uh, not necessarily talk about the rude sandstorm anymore. So like you said, I buy power starting out on the terror side. It's dazed steel, AZK swag, skadoodle going up against complexity sponsored by sound blaster, nothing, Hiko, anger, Sean Gares, and Senfis. And of course, this stream has been brought to you by the generous people at BenQ. Don't forget that they are absolutely the best monitor makers in the world. If you don't have one, you should get one. And already things are underway. Looks like a CZ75 out in the hands of Daze. He's going to drop down immediately inside Dark Spot and try and get some shots in on the double doors. He actually takes the damage out of that and exchanges none in return, or deals none in return, I should say, as he sits on 68. 70 now for Steel, 75 for AZK. So Complexity doing well, but as I say that, Sean Gear's dropping down to just 18. And he's playing over, uh, actually, he's rotated out along. He's lurked back toward middle, and they might actually push through that as Senfis and nothing are stacked there with him, but watch out. Swag's in lower, and he spots up Sean Gares. There he is. At least they sent him first. He's the low HP player. It's not a massive loss if they had to lost someone else and still had him on 18. It would be more detrimental. Swag's actually going to drop in return. Senfis will get that frag. So the trades are now even. As long is finally going to be aggressive. Nice shot. Senfis picking up a double kill there all the way through CT. AZP trades out on anger, though. But now Senfis now with the hat trick. This guy is having a pistol round two. Remember, make it a quad. What a shot on days. And AZK's on 10 HP. Can he get the ace? Oh he does. Senfis, unbelievable. Team Canada doing it big right now. The bomb did go down for I buy power. Important to note, but Senfis, man, that is unbelievable. That four shot made me cringe. It was so good. Like, Senfis, I've always actually said this about Senfis. Senfis is like the forest of North America. You always can rely on him to probably multi frag on pistol rounds. He's so good with the pistol. He's, he's one of, he is the best pistoler in North America, hands down, by far. And we saw uh, in that round, I Power really tried to go long A pretty much the whole time with three players. And that's what they wound up going with. But Complexity had kind of a cool little mid aggression they did with three players. They traded out on that, but Simmons did get the better end of the deal. He also caught a player crossing long, then he comes up, kills some people on the cat and sight, and does well. And then look at Sean already come up with a frag onto Slag at long A. Of course, we do see Famasas and M4s on the CT side too. Terrorists are eco, no armor. So this should be a mop-up round for the CT side. And Anger and company seem to be just pulling away with it here. Yeah, absolutely. Steel manages to get two before finally dropping down. At least that does give him a little bit of frag money. But yeah, like you said, pretty much an eco mop. I just want to clarify, chat's a little confused. Complexity is not a Canadian team, but Senfis is a Canadian player. Uh, so that's important to note. That's why I said the Team Canada mm -hmm. reference. I'm a proud Canadian, and he did a <laughs> fantastic job. So That's true. Had to point that Look out. Look at this. Sean already going Eco into guns. hard to get an op already in third round. And the reason is because they knew I buy powers and get AKs this round. So Sean already getting an op early. Oh, and he gets and a it pick works. with it. Great stuff. And it's on to Skadoodle, who is actually running a, uh, an AK as they're buying early, who's normally the counter opper. Uh, expect that an op battle at mid will commence at some point, uh, if not just to avenge that frag later on. 2 nothing complexity, our score. Sean Gare's still just sitting at middle there with that op uh, in hand. AZK is the bomb holder right now for I by Power, who are a man down already. He's stacked up around long, but Daze is actually going to take down that op that Sean Gare was, pardon me, Sean Gare's was wielding. So now the situation goes back into a deadlock for on four. Sephis spots up one more through the door on to Steel, but Steel gets the better of it as Sephis could not connect at the box there, the Xbox, and now it is actually a round that's gone back the way of Ibi Power on this third round by. We talked about how they got the bomb down early, and that's contributed to why they are in this already. Hiko stacked up left side over by the fence at B, and he's going to have Dazed and Swag just passively pushing in. He spots up on Dazed, though, makes a lot of noise coming in, but he gets aggressive. He doesn't. I thought he might try and stay passive there, and as a result, Swag gets the frag back on him, and it's all on Anger, who manages to get steeled through CT spawn. A nice shot. And now Anger is going to have to clutch it all the way back, though, as the bomb goes down. And, man, this is, would be... Uh, complexity needs every round. I mean, we talked about this is so important. And already that third round buy has worked wonders for I buy Power. They knocked an op out of Sean Gare's hands. They're going to be back on a full save if they lose this, and we'll be looking at a 4-4 situation. Anger's going to work his way in the hmm. site, but he doesn't peek fully right and looks toward the tunnels. AZK gets the frag as the result. 2-1, now your score. I'm surprised he went for that. He has really low cash, and if he could have said that M4, his team might have been able to buy this round. So that was actually kind of risky by Anger to try to do the one versus two. Um, 
But that was just great work by Steel at mid. You know, he caught Symphus as well as able to press through and catch a second frag to complete the mid to B split. Swag also doing some work from the B tunnel. So that was just a really nice little mid to B split. Most of the pressure had to be ton steel, kind of soloing up mid, getting a couple of frags, and just overall a good gun round. Complexity is going to have to eco this round because they lose that rifle on anger. Uh, so they weren't able to, to get, uh, you know, Famasas or M4s this round. So it's a full eco. Great opportunity for Ava Power to go ahead and tie it up right here, right now at 2 all. But they're playing smart. Cheeky, they're not pushing into anything. So, yeah. Cheeky boost at mid on steel as well. I don't know if you saw that. They put him up on the ledge there over on the left side by the cubby. So he's yeah, going to be great, an interesting that's spot. That's a great spot to watch Cat Aggression. Yeah, and when you've got guns, why not? Because this allows them to play passive. And if anyone wants to over-aggress from complexity, they will absolutely take them down. And uh, now they're going to be posted up at middle. But look at this from X-Ray. You can see it. There's three players on the mm -hmm. other side of those double doors. And they're just waiting for anyone to go through. Steel's kind of wise to it, though. He heads toward Cap, but now he's going to rotate back as Sean Gears takes down Days with that CZ-75. And Steel avenges his teammate. A good frag. He might get a second one on nothing. Don't waste all your ammo. Don't blow the clip. Oh, he's going to fall back before he gets peeked on. Good play. Uh, nothing really uh, going to come of that. Actually, it was on nothing. He loses just a bit of HP, and he's on 82. So four on four the situation. Nothing actually also managed to pick up that AK that was Drop. Steel's gonna get a second frag on to Shemphis, but there it is. Nothing goes back into him through the boxes with that AK that he picked up, and now he's gonna have to use that gun in the three-on-three -three situation to slow down I buy power a little bit more. 22 seconds remain on the clock, and the bomb not yet down. Skadoodle has that on catwalk. They've smoked off the platform on the site, and they're gonna have to work their way in. Anger's playing passive on long. He goes down below an elevator, and it looks like nothing's actually gonna go for a flank right now, as Swag's gonna spot Anger and Hiko, and with the timing, he knows that Jordan's there. In fact, he's already seen him, and Jordan Jordan's going to get on his horse and try and run from him. So this round will go the way of I by power. Jordan might get an exit frag on Swag. Yes, he does. But I don't think he's going to go for a full clutch here. Mm -mm. So 2-2. Two, two, uh, okay, I thought he was going to go back up cat. Yeah. It would have been I silly mean, at that I the way point. that round worked out was is it was a, you know, an eco round for complexity. So I by power was playing pretty cautious. They didn't want to run into a stack. But that's exactly what Days winds up doing. He presses along with the AK through double doors to try to scope things out. Gets killed. Gives up that AK to nothing, nothing able to to make a couple of kills off that. He killed Steel at mid as well as catching another frag there, the exit on Swag at the end. Uh, so that round almost got pretty dangerous because I think Hiko actually went with an AK before all all it was said and done. But as you saw, Swag comes up huge for my by power, able to take Hiko down as well as chase nothing off, and he actually got another frag in the process as well. So Swag really kind of saved the day there because it came down to a three on three where Cole had two guns. So that was actually really good by Swag to kind of save the day for I by power. But now we're back to even guns, two to two score, close as we expected. And long A going to be the aggression, smokes and flashes heading out in both directions. And it's good to see that Complexity is playing that double aggressive long pat, pat and then falling back and getting passive on cat strategy. Because if they can get early picks with it, it gives them a big advantage. And it doesn't allow them to get absolutely overwhelmed at A early on. So pretty standard play, but very important one nonetheless this time. But look at this though, now they've fallen all the way back. They're stacked up at CT spawn. Uh, it looks double like three cat. players there. Oh, double cat. Sorry, you're right. The overhead throw me off there. But nonetheless, back in passive A positions right now with uh, Semphis and Hiko still at B. There's no one over there right now on the minimap, but it looks like they are kind of rotating back in that direction is I by power. Dazed picks up the bomb that was at middle that was intentionally dropped there, so they could make a strategy call, and now they are going to lurk at middle. We'll see if anything comes of this. Still Skadoodle, though, and AZK are trying to work long and just wait for someone to peek out. Skadoodle with that op and pit really wants to get a frag. Sean Gares is going to get one, though. He's on catwalk, and that's Steel already down, so that means already complexity have the advantage in this round. Nothing, though, is going to push Forward. He does get the frag on Swag. Those guys used to be best friends, and it looked like they were teammates for life until recently, but nothing is going to get the better of it. And now Dazed finds himself in a 1v5 situation. He is going to get one frag onto nothing, and he will continue to work up Catwalk here, actually. He might spot up Sempus, who's just down below. In fact, he already pre-aimed there, but yes, yes, he does get the frag. I thought he was going to miss out as he pushed in there toward the Tetris. Sean Gares responds with the Opto, and he's off to a flying start. Seven frags already, and he leads all players. Yeah, that was really good by Cole. I mean, I actually kind of thought they got a little bit timid there at long. They actually won that whole, like, nade, counter nade exchange, and Complexity came out way better on the long control at the end, but they decided, you know, don't want to risk it. Go ahead and back up. Go ahead and give up long. Sean actually opts from an angle that I don't think I by power really expected. It's not common to see oppers peak cat that way. Uh, so that was definitely something they didn't expect. So Sean gets an instant uh, advantage there. Nothing was playing the corner for the trade. And so now we actually have a broken buy here 
for I buy power. They do have an op on Skadoodle and an AK on AZK, but everyone else is just on pistols. So this is kind of a risk. They're, oh, they're hoping that Ska and AZK can just make the plays with the two guns that they have. Uh, so definitely a little bit risky broken by here, but it could pay off. They still have armor and upgraded pistols on the other players. Yeah, and with Hiko already down at 25 HP, that does give them a little bit of help. I think they probably could have stuck to B, actually. No one's really rotated around. There's still two players at long A. And with Hiko, the only player missing any HP, it might have been a good choice. And it looks like they actually might rotate back in that position right now. They actually are going to split it here mid to B. And Skadoodle's going to lurk out with the op and try and find someone at CT spawn. Not going to do so. Once again, Sean Gares has posted up close cat here. You can see him peeking through the crack in between that pipe. Sempus in good position. He's going to take down Skadoodle. That's the op down. And he's going to mop up Steel as well. But AZK finally responds using Steel as a bit of a meat shield there. But Hiko manages to go back into him. And Sways and... Uh, pardon me, Sways and Dazed. Swag and Dazed, the only two remaining right now for I by Power Bomb. Will go down, though. That's crucial. And look at that. It actually caught Hiko out. He went in and tried to look for the Bomb Planner as soon as he realized it was down. And Swag gets a frag as a result. And now it's a two-on-three situation. And the positioning's not bad for I by Power. There's a chance they could pull this off as they are going to come in through window, but Dazed is going to drop and now Swag is going to find himself in a really awkward situation. As he, Oh, what a shot at the Sean Gares peeking out, but he is unable to connect on to Anger. And the Diffuse will come out. Complexity picks up a second round in quick succession. 4-2, now your score. And Complexity needs to continue stringing these rounds together. That was actually really dangerous because Simpus was pretty much playing mid alone and Hiko was playing B alone with low health. So that round actually kind of favored I have power as far as strategy goes, the way that they were working. Working B, but Simpish just comes up with a heads up individual play by coming up with two kills, and Hiko is quick enough to react to trade right back. So it winds up being three frags in favor of Cole and only one for I by Power at that whole situation at middle. And then from there, Hiko goes first, gets all the information for his team on the retake and the three versus two, and they win that as well. Now, I by Power had the broken by last round, so now they're forced to full Eco here, except for a couple of upgraded pistols, but you can always do that as terrorists. Uh, you can always buy an upgraded pistol no matter what, basically. Uh, and they're gonna just try to press out middle again. We'll see what happens. What a shot! Sempis makes it a double, makes it a triple! We already saw an ace out of this guy, and the Pokeball might catch out Steel here. It does! Another He's ace? already up to a quad, and can Ace Ventura track down one more animal and make it a second time? And Dazed is actually oh gonna be in position! God. Can you believe it? Team Cannon on the board one more time. A second ace for Sempis. Man, oh man. Call up Jim Carrey and tell him his role in the next movie has been lost. Semphis is stepping in. Semphis, I've never actually seen two aces in the same match in a regular season match before. In CSGO. For North America, at least. Maybe like yeah, at that's the amateur insane. level it's happened before, but in pro matches, I've never seen two aces. Uh, Freakazoid did it once on LAN, actually. Season 14 LAN, he got two aces and won a game on Inferno. But outside of that, I've never seen two aces like that. It's crazy. Good job, Symphys. <laughs> like, that's all I can say. That, that's wow. your analysis for that round. Um, <laughs> unreal. Oh, the smoke grenade's actually catching out the complexity players there. They were a little bit confused as they push through aggressively onto long double doors, and they get caught out. Swag and Dazed each pick up a frag, so now it's a three on two. But, mm, actually, oddly enough, I buy power not committing. I thought they'd just rush down long and try and take the site. I'm not sure if they're a little bit scared of that crossfire that nothing would have had. Well, they suspected that they would have had set up. In fact, uh, what? Uh... <laughs> What? Nothing confused. <laughs> Semphis is too, playing too good. He needs a little bit of a handicap here, so nothing's, nothing's going to take a little bit of HP off him. But I think, yeah, they suspected a crossfire when they came into the platform, and they didn't really want to risk it, so they've fallen back, and now they're going to play the pick strategy, but it might not pay off as Hiko finds Dazed to close up the round a little bit here. As, man, they're just trying to inch their way back into this. Bombsite actually already taken by Swag. Nothing's going to go in. He's going to look all the wrong way, but he turns and gets him. Swag didn't quite see him. I thought Swag was going to be aware of it. It actually was just a matter of looking the right way at the right time, and uh, nothing comes out with the frag there. But now he's in the back of the site, and he's in an awkward situation. That Molotov too far ahead, but Steel gets the frag as it forces him off to the right side. And now the two-on-two -two resumes. This is a lot closer than I think it could have been had. I by power just rushed down long. They're trying to smoke and go for the plant. Steel actually, no, he's not going to go for the plant. He pushes through. He's down to 7 HP, though, because he did get shot up through the box there. As Hiko puts some heavy fire into him. Bomb does go down. Money at least going the way of I by power, but things not looking good. As right now, Steel stacked up. Oh, they've got a little bit of positioning, but it's actually a 1-1 a one -one split here. As already, Sempis rotating around onto the tunnels, and there it is. He gets the call from his teammate, takes down Steel on the backside, and now Skadoodle in a position that is very awkward coming out of closet. Yeah. And they will get the frag. So another That's round going the way of complexity. 
that's normally not where you want to have an op or in a post plant situation. It's like a really tough like spot to play from with an op. Uh, so just great play from Complexity. This is actually looking really good for them. They already have six rounds on CT side. They're up six to two. They've definitely come out the gates very strong. But I want to caution you to not get too excited because literally two of the rounds were aces from Symphys for one. And, and the second point is that Cole has had early leads against IY Power in the past this season as well as against other teams and have still crumbled. So it's not, my point is this game's not over. Uh, so look, look for IY Power to fight back here. But this is definitely a great start for Cole. Man, already Steel does some damage. Sean Garris is going to drop down. Ooh. Senfis now goes down as well. He tried to swap out on that AWP and gets caught out as a result. Skadoodle picks up that frag. And now it looks like I by Power is going to play a little bit more aggressive. Nope, they went through and now they fall back. They just wanted to grab that gun, I think, and they threw it back on their side of the double doors. Uh, for whatever reason, it's not an eco. They, uh, I think, was it? I, I'm not sure if he grabbed the AWP or not. If it was the AWP, it was a good play. If it wasn't, then it was a useless play because they've already got rifles on the CT side. Nothing's going to get dazed through the doors. Good play there. That's going to close things up a little bit. Hiko now down to 22. The grenade heading out in his direction. No, not going to pick him up. Very close. I think it just landed on the backside of those cinder blocks. Otherwise, it would have killed him. Swag, nice shot onto nothing. He finally gets a little bit of revenge and goes back into him. And he's going to take down Hiko in the window as well, but not before Hiko could get Skadoodle. And AZK picks up Anger lurking down Catwalk, trying to get a slow rotation. And that will give I by Power their first round since round number four. And they make it 6-3, to three, cutting the lead in half. Yeah, I mean, I've had actually been really successful when they've had guns on attacking mid and B. It's only really been retakes that have kind of bailed Cole out of these rounds and have led them to, to win. So, I mean, the point I'm trying to make is I've Power, when they have guns, they've been very strong on their mid B splits. Uh, and something that Cole does have to worry about because they're not going to be able to retake every single time. And you see this round, they're actually committing uh, three players to be because it is an eco, of course. So great opportunity for Abba Power to work on the tie. And we'll see what happens, though. Last time Cole made it to eco, very scary. Skadoodle working up Catwalk, trying to support Steel and his teammates. Steel gets a nice shot on Anger there as a recoil, or, uh, pardon me, a reflex shot. As he swapped targets over onto him. Nothing still sitting on 6 HP. Very awkward situation. Bomb is going to go down on A. Sean Gares is going to try and work through middle and spot it on anyone. That decoy lower B actually threw him off a little bit there when he came through the doors. But he gets away with 32 HP. And are they going to just sit, go for a four-man save? It looks like they are. They don't want to give up any more money. Actually, Semphis is still posted up in CT looking for an exit frag. But the rest of the players have fallen back into safe positions. And this round's going to end with a relatively melodramatic tone, I guess you could say. Yeah, I'm surprised Simmons wasn't the one who saved. He actually had head armor he could have saved. So that actually would have been smart. I mean, the rest of the team's just trying to get exit frags. Maybe not give up another 300 bucks to swag. Terrorists win. Yeah, well, nonetheless, that's the decision, and they've stuck to it. So, 6 4 now, our score. And I buy power getting back into it a little bit. I would argue, I don't know, we can, I don't want to open up a can of debate, but. A can of debate. A can of worms. But uh, I think this map's a little bit T sided, so this is a good start mm -hmm. for complexity. Yeah, I said that. I just hope they don't let the lead slip. They've done that a lot this season where they've had a big lead and still wound up losing the match. I hope that doesn't occur here. They've had a strong start, like you said. They just need to hold on to it. They're starting to put more emphasis on the B bomb side, as you can see. Once again, they have two committed to B and one mid. They've been more A heavy in the past. So they're definitely noticing I by power ascendancy to work that mid and B, and they're putting more numbers in that mid area because of it. No more soloing mid for Symphys. He actually does have some support here uh, from, I uh, believe it's Nothing. Who, yeah, nothing is Jordan. kind of the floater for Complexity. They love to give Nothing a lot of decision-making and movement to himself. And so he's elected to go here. And he's going to reap a benefit oh, yeah. of it. It fits his personality. He's just that kind of guy. And he's going to pick up a double as a result as he stacks up on the back side of the door. Swaps over to the AK. Skadoodle got Symphys in return with an op. And nothing is going to get a third onto Skadoodle. That's going to drop him down. Good frag. AZK responds into him. He didn't have a lot of HP. And let's face it, he's done more than his fair share this round. So now it's up to Hiko, Anger, and Sean Gares to close out against Swag and AZK, who do have the bomb, interestingly enough. They are working it back. In fact, they've kind of split right now. AZK's on catwalk. He does have an open A site. Anger's pushed up all the way at long. Sean Gares is at middle. So if he does rotate back to support Swagger, Swag rotates through. He's going to be cut off. So advantage Ooh. still the way of complexity. But as I say that, AZK gets into to, uh, CT spawn from Cat as he drops down, and he gets a quick frag out of it, and that means that Complexity thinks they're A. Anger's gone back down long. AZK's still over in that area. That's going to cut him off from a rotation, and Sean Gares is going to have to enlighten himself to the fact that they are not at A, 
And oh, I buy power is going to win this one with a 1 1 split in a 2 on 2 situation. Very clever as they will pull off this round, it would appear. As now Sean Garris finds himself yes. in the middle of a dilly pickle here, and he's going to get taken down heading into B. And I'm not really sure they were confused on where the bomb was, but that didn't even matter. The point was is that AZK made the best play he could have made. He was able to throw a smoke down to cover his drop into CT spawn. And as you saw, he wound up getting three frags from that position. Uh, so he really, like you said, he split the CTs up. You know, they always had to worry about AZK shooting them in the back because they tried to retake the B bomb site where the bomb was planted. And so AZK just coming up with a great individual play. Very smart play. That's one of the smartest plays he could have made there. And it definitely is helping Abai Power climb back into this game. Complexity ecoed once again. Great opportunity for Abai Power to tie this thing up at 6 all. But Sean's looking for a frag here, and AZK does a lot of damage, but AZK able to get away for now. Yeah, down to 8 HP, but he will fall back to a safe place. Play a little bit more passive as the CTs on an eco right now need to contribute anything that they can early on. And that frag would have been crucial. AZK still on the board means a lot when he's got an AK against pistols. The HP game doesn't matter. That damage is going to be substantial right now. As they are just waiting it out. A little bit more passive, a little bit more slower toned in the last two rounds than we initially saw. It was quite aggressive off the hop for this matchup. And now it looks like they've slowed things a little bit out of the T side. Back to a standard strategy. In fact, three players now working up A, which is uh, not a bad place to be. There are two players on Cat, Semphis on the site. Steel's going to be the first one up there. And let's see if he can spot out anything. Actually, I don't even think that he's been spotted yet. Yeah, Daze is going to get into Semphis. And I don't think Steel was spotted until just now when he made a little bit of noise. And Swag and Steel going to make two more frags. Hiko gets one more back into Swag at B. And the bomb will go down. Hiko and Anger remain for complexity. And Anger's actually, oh, spotted up Steel as he was hugging the, the left side of the wall, coming up the stairs from Catwalk. No frag to come of it, but he does knock him down to 53 HP. And it looks like the, the uh, counter-terrorists are going to fall back one more time and not give up any more frag money. He'd go all the way back to T-spawn. Anger's still just kind of lurking at middle. But 6-6, six, six, we're going to be back to a deadlock score here. I don't know, have Complexity already done enough on this half, or are they in a position where they need everything? I mean, it's momentum-based at this point. I mean, yeah, statistically speaking, six rounds on CT side, pretty solid. It's not uncommon to be able to pull 10 rounds or so on T side. So I think that I think they're comfortable with the fact that the score is 6-6. Six to six, But I think that complexity would love to have uh, at least one more round to really feel confident going into half number two. Um, but I mean... Like I said, that they've had a big lead. They won four rounds in a row at one point, but now I by Power has won the last four. So the, the momentum has definitely shifted back over to the I by Power side. So that's something Complexity is probably worried about for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, oh, and Skadoodle gets Hiko. That's not going to help. I was going to say they need to win this pick battle, but no way. Skadoodle with the op has been so dominant all season. I think he's having one of his better seasons, if I do if I do say so myself, as he does mm -hmm. pick up one more frag at middle. And that's going to make things already in the favor of I by Power. And now they'll just wait it out. They've got the benefit of time to work with and the benefit of a man advantage. As four players stacked up at middle just outside long. And Swag's still working at B. As Skadoodle, can he get one more? Yes, he does. Sean Gare's down and out. Nothing does have an op, though. And it looks like he's actually picked up Sean's. As they will try and counter peek anything at all. Nothing's going to cross. And he actually, Sempis is going to pick out Steel, who went very aggressive on the back of a flash from a teammate there. But not going to pay off. AZK still at long battling it out with Anger, who used to be teammates, keep in mind, when they were both on I by Power and formerly on Dynamic before that. So a lot of history between those two players. And their battle sort of resumes. Actually, it looks like AZK's fallen back with Skadoodle and Dazed. But they are still looking toward that long direction. That works too strong by Swag at B, though. Yeah, absolutely. He's already in. I mean, they could rotate there right now if they wanted. This this should be evident that they do have players at long. Anger's going to get the frag on AZK, though. Patience is a virtue. He picks up one as he comes through the door. I wasn't even sure that was going to go down quite like that. Good patience, AZK. As, uh, or pardon me, good patience, Anger. As AZK drops down, and now he's going to smoke out CT, but they are rotating back to B. Swag's made the call. He's done his job. You said it. He's opened up the site. They'll get in there relatively easily. Well, completely for free, actually. As Semphis and Anger the only two remaining, and I'm not 100% sure... Not yeah, going for it. eight seconds. That, well, are they not going for it because they're not sure they're going to get the plan, or are they not going for it because they just aren't going for it? I'm not... I guess they're not going for it. They're still stacked up over a day. Also, Ava Pirate has two snipers now, by the way. Swag picked up this, uh, the Fallen Op, so I don't know if they'll stick with that. I mean, they easily could. Swag's a very capable opera. We've definitely seen them pull off crazy snipe shots in the past. As we do see Ava Pirate actually going to be going for the hunt here. They don't want to allow the CTs to save these guns, so you see Dazed and Swag making their way up. Actually going to boost Swag up here with the op. Simp is going to be able to catch that, though. So now Days will try his luck, and that won't work either. 
So it looks like Simpsons is going to hold on to the Sim 4. Scott's not really in a position to, to chase. So the guns at least do get saved by Anger and Simphus. But just, I mean, Swag is known to be a lurker. He was kind of like part of a two lurker setup that Complexity ran on Ava Power. He's the, the solo lurker. He, he does fit that role very nicely. And he, he did pretty much, like you said, just walk into B and control it for a while to allow his team the late rotate back to B after everything else kind of failed at long A. Anger able to hold off AZK there. Uh, so they pretty much cut off A. But Skadoodle opened up the round with some nice mid picks. Swag gets into B and covers it up. And so another round goes to I by Power. Now winning five rounds in a row. But Sean gets Sky at long. So finally Cole seeing a little bit of something here in this round. Look at this aggressive B. Holy. Yep, three players coming through. The bomb's actually down in there, so this is going to give that away. And they get the frag on... Did they not see the bomb? They didn't see it. They didn't see they it. They didn't yeah. see it. They would have definitely pressed in if they would have saw it. Yeah, absolutely. They had a chance to capitalize positionally on the round. They don't take it because they didn't see it. That was just... I think it was just behind one of the bricks on the floor. Yeah. To the left side of the pillar. And whether... I don't think that was an intentional drop spot, specifically behind the brick, but uh, they got a little bit lucky there. Check out this spot from Sean Gares, by the way. Little he right new meta for you. Watching Cat oh, from through yeah, the box. Oh, yeah, yeah, through the boxes, yeah. Oh, I can't, oh my God. what? <laughs> yeah, check out that spot by Sean Gare. Steel oh, says, I like it. Wow. And he goes bird watching with the binoculars right now as he takes down nothing as well. Good shots by the op. And now it's a 3 3 score. Not seeing that bomb really is uh, going to be pretty detrimental for complexity. But where's the aggression going? It looks like it's going to actually, they're already in A. My mistake. They are all the way there. And now Hiko, Semphis, and Anger have to retake the site at this point. They've saved too many. They've got to get back in this. As they have dropped five straight rounds. And it looks like Anger's going to do his job. He's taking down Days. AZK will get Hiko, but he's going to get immediately revenged by Semphis, who's following in his footsteps. And can Semphis also go on to steal? It's still a two-on-one. They can pinch on him, but Steel gets the shot on Semphis. Good play. Well-timed, but Anger will get the frag. And does he have a kit? He does, so they will get the defuse as well. 7-7. Seven, seven. We got a tie game heading into round number 15. And this is as good as it gets, my friends. I talked about how, based on the records on CSGO, based on the records in ESEA, the CSGO Lounge stats were created. But this is anyone's game. Make no mistake about it. Yeah, I mean, that saved the day for complexity right there. Uh, Steel getting that op shot on Sean, though. Uh, for those of you who are like, what the hell, how'd that happen? Steel knows that Sean likes to play that spot on this map. Steel is very much reviews demos and such, and he probably knew the pre-shoot that. Uh, Sean does peek that a lot, actually. So that's kind of where that was. But outside of that, you know, great round from Cole. They got their seventh round. I think that they're fine now. And, and just Sean... Complexity's kind of switched gears. They they were really passive at the beginning no, of the half, but the yep. last two rounds, they pressed B Tunnels aggro. They just had a really aggro pick on long A. So they've definitely changed things up here and gotten a lot more aggressive on their CT side. It's worked out for them. Man, oh man. This is getting really good. I mean, it was good from the start, but with this score, this type of play, the aggressive CT side, this is really good Counter-Strike right now. As good as it gets. Swag is going to be posted up in tunnels with his teammate in Skadoodle. They're looking for the pick on to Hiko, who's stacked up on the back side of the site. And he's actually got a little bit of support from Semphis, who's just worked his three through double doors into the closet. So a double B strategy with nothing in middle. So he could get there quickly as well. AZK so far the only player to drop. 45 seconds on the clock remaining. Steel still firing away with the op at mid. Trying to pick up one frag. Not able to find anyone so far. But Patience is now coming out, and oh no, Semphis is actually in perfect position as Daze tries to jump up on the boxes, but Swag's going to respond. Bomb's dropped. That delays them a little bit here, but they are going to have to play it on picks. Nothing's going to take down Swag once again. Those two, hey, heated in an exchange all game long, and nothing picks up a second on Skadoodle. Steel now on 14 HP, drops to nothing as well, and he picks up a nice quick hat trick, and Complexity takes the half 8-7 on the CT side. That is crucial to note. That being said, they got completely shut down T-side against these guys on Nuke. A different map, and a little bit more familiar with the rosters. But this is still up in the air. Yeah, I think it all depends. I mean, Complexity usually has a really good T-side on DDoS 2. I mean, DDoS 2 has always been one of Complexity's strongest maps, but at the same token, it's also been one of I by Power's stronger maps in the past. Now, what I will tell you is that I by Power, I mean, we, we saw Complexity get aggressive on CT side towards the end, but in general, they're usually more passive. In general, I by Power takes a lot more risk on CT side as far as aggression goes. So either A, that's going to work out really well for them, and they'll be able to get back in the game, so to speak. However, if Complexity notes that I by Power likes to get aggro on CT side, which they should know based on watching them play, if they've reviewed their demos from other DDoS2 matches they've played uh, this season, and in SIVO and stuff like that, 
Uh, if they know how to counter that properly, I think Complexity has a really good chance to actually take this map. Yeah, I do too. I think they're in a really good position. They've just got to hold it together and not give up too... I mean, mistakes will cost them heavily, and momentum is everything. They've got to win the eco battle or the economy battle and, and try and hold on to things right now. Pistol underway, though. Senfis has dropped down to 63... Or, pardon me, 73 HP already with the CZ-75. Nades out, uh, flashes and smokes. No uh, frags other than the one we just saw thrown. Actually, I take that back. Skadoodle also holding onto one of those, so I didn't see that initially on the overlay. Steel's got an incinerary grenade, so we'll see if he's expecting a push. Where is he playing? He's at A, and he's actually oh, pushed Derp back. Smoke. Oh, interesting. I, I thought Steel with the uh, incinerary might get aggressive, but here comes Long A is going to be the name of the game. And they are going to push all the way up. Anger's going to get a frag on the kitty cat as Skadoodle drops down. Swag's going to go back into Sean Gares. Nothing into Steel. And it is now three players remaining for I by Power. Looking for a way to claw back into this. And Hiko actually is going to pick up two of those guys. And Daze will drop as well. Good play by Hiko. Pissed around uh, heroics by him. And, uh, of course, we saw Semphis in the first half. 9-7 now our score. Complexity gets the upper hand on the T side. That's crucial. They now have the economy game... I won't say one, it's too early, but potentially in a good spot. I think Cole has this now. I think they're fine. I mean, I know it's really early to call. I mean, obviously, I buy power their aggression on their CT side once they get guns could catch Cole off guard and start bringing it back into the game. But if Complexity is, is uh, aware that that could happen and is prepared for it, I think they should be fine. They seem to have the momentum going for them right now. One both pistols with steel. Match. Yeah. Important to note that they have one, indeed, both pistols. As Skadoodle and Steel posted up at long, looking for anything that they can. As Complexity fans out across the map, Hiko very passively watching long game, making sure there's going to be no eco round shenanigans or second round shenanigans with the pistols. And that Steel won't pu push through, but it actually looks like he may do so, as he is in between both sets of double doors right now. Bomb dropped intentionally at mid as they still wait for the first frag of the round. A minute remaining, Complexity trying to play smart. They can't afford to throw away rounds, and Ecos have been more and more common lately. I remember specifically at LAN ETS, I think I saw 15 on final Sunday. That was pretty insane, as now they are finally going to commit to B is Complexity. They're working their way in. Nothing's got the bomb, and he's delayed behind. He's in lower B tons, but the site is open. It's completely free, as AZK has worked his way back out to middle, and the rest of the players have gambled that it is going to be A, but it is not as now they are inside the site. Swag's coming back around. AZK still at mid. Not going to do anything about this. I wonder if they're going to go for a five-man save. They might try and do it and not They'll give away any They'll probably save their head armor players. Maybe yeah, Swag three players will go for exits. Well, AZK's in a position where he has to... Uh, yeah, there's, yeah, AZK's wow. only one position, you're right. I'm surprised he exited that way. I think he must have thought there was a lurker in tunnels because, wow, look at him. He's trying to get away. Oh, where's Launders to show him how to do some bunny hops? We need Blast Fun here to just power himself out of that situation. I'm surprised he didn't just go through tunnels, to be honest. But uh, he chooses to go back in mid, and he gets away with it so far. 21 HP, but they are going to lurk onto these frags. The round will go the way of complexity, as you're going to hear the bomb detonate in any second. And that means we will be facing a 10-7 score and not a position to buy for the counter terrorists. They didn't do enough damage or kills in the first two rounds. And, of course, the eco economy is a little bit tougher for the CT side in general. So, This one is more one of the few rounds I've seen zero players die in a round. Yeah, I used to be shocked by that, but I've actually seen it a few times lately. Yeah. I don't, not so much this season, when, but last season if, it was like three or four CTs times. If the CTs wouldn't have had armor, they probably would have went for exits. But because they had armor, that's definitely worth saving. I mean, that's, what, $650 for chest armor uh, on swag, and then the other players, it was like $800 for head armor or something like that. I know yeah. it's $650 for normal armor, like small armor. So that, right. that's a huge thing to save, actually. Oh, getting a little bit of lag here. Swag heading back into the site, so another save. Sean Gares, by the way, interesting to note, did not buy this round. He's saving for an op. He wants to have an op on the gun round for complexity, and that's going to be very important as the op battle is very, very, very crucial, especially going against Skadoodle. He's so powerful, and on the CT side especially, when you are coming into his line of fire, forget it. Oh, nice shot, Swag, there, as they spot out Angers, just sitting back in the backside of the B-Tunnels. Steel's gotten aggressive on A, though, and Hiko's playing very passively, and T-Spawn manages to take him down. 
So that evens things out. The Eco still has a chance, but it looks like it's just going to get slowed a little bit. Daze, though, doing some good damage on Sean Gare. Sean Gare is unable to connect. Mind you, that was pistol versus pistol, as I did mention. He was saving. And now Daze is going to pick up another one on Senfis. So, man, I buy power doing good work here to try and make a case for an Eco. Hiko is going to catch AZK trying to flank back onto Cat from long, though. And now nothing gets Daze, so it is all on swag. And he better show off some of that if he wants to get into it, but he does. Nice shot through the wall onto Hiko. That's going to make it here a one on one situation. Bomb finally goes down, and it is the old teammates, the best friends, the, the players that a lot of people would never split up. It is Jordan Nothing Gilbert against Braxton Swag Pierce. Two epic players, two young players, two very cute players going to have to play very cheeky against one another as Swag now working out of CT spawn onto the ramp. Nothing still committed here to Catwalk, but now he's not going to lurk too far from the bomb. He spots him up, but can he get the frag? They both have rifles, important to note as well, as Swag did manage to get on the AK. He fakes the defuse. Pros never fake. That's a lie. Swag does so, but he does not get the defuse. Complexity pick up one more round, but that was exciting nonetheless. Does he get away? He does. He manages to sneak out with 34 HP, so he will save the AK as we do head on to the gun round. Yeah, I mean, Complexity just dodged a huge bullet there. Uh, they almost got ecoed. They came down to a one versus one that Swag almost got. Uh, that's definitely nerve-wracking if you're Complexity. They, they almost drop around, but either way, they're up 11 to 7. They dodged the bullet. Uh, they've been playing really well. They have the momentum on their side. Uh, as long as they don't fall to some cheeky aggression by I by Power, I think they should be fine. But uh, it's still anyone's game. If the aggression for I by Power works, then I mean, they can get right back into it. I didn't hear you mention about the armor, by the way. It's $1,000 for head armor yeah. as well. Sorry. Uh, I don't know what I, I was I thinking. Kinda, I kind of caught you at the end of your sentence there, and I just clued in now that, yeah, it's, it's totally $1,000. Steel's going to go down early as he gets caught up in the smoke, and the aggression from Hiko pushes right through double. Swag's going to even it out, though, as that evens up the trades 1-1. One, one. And they will have to wait this out and see, again, passive. Nothing's actually already inside the site, though. And they haven't taken him down. AZK is going to fall as a result. Swag goes back into him, though. So Braxton gets one more frag onto nothing. Sean Garris takes down Days. Three on two. Still our situation. Anger's going to drop that. Evens it up, and it drops the bomb. Not a good situation. I buy power suddenly find themselves in a good position. Can s oh, Skadoodle gets Sean Gares. It looked like he was preempt slightly high on him, but the flick shot low gets him. And there's oh the second God. one on to Hiko. I said watch out for it. Skadoodle with an op on CT side is absolutely scary. And there's Swag, no other way to put it. Swag is such a good B solo player. And you saw it there. Three frags at the beginning. Skadoodle also picking up frags with the op. And, and I buy power didn't need aggression there. They just had a really good solo play from Swag at B. Great stuff. And my only excuse for not knowing the price is I'm a play by play. Caster at heart, man. Give me some slack. I'm trying to provide <laughs> the analysis. The... I don't know what yeah. I was thinking in all honesty. I have no clue what was crossing my head. It's alright, Dustin. I forgive you. I got 650 right, though. Yep. <laughs> Swag's gonna get the frag. Swag the frag on anger. He drops down. That's an early one going the way of uh, I by Power. Now, interesting to note, given that they lost so many players, in fact, they lost five despite winning two rounds ago to pick up their 10th round, they lost so much economy out of that that they are back on a save despite only losing one in this half. So, advantage I by Power here to make it 11-9. Remember, my prediction was 16-13 complexity. We'll see if that reigns true. Daze is going to spam into that smoke, and he gets two, and then Swag closes it out with one frag. Uh, grenade and a second one with the M4, so... Early mopping of the floor there, as now we see 9-11. Complexity will be back on the guns this round, though, but they are buying out to do so, important to note. Yeah, Swag is leading the charge here for Abba Parra. There's no question about it. He's coming up huge right now uh, on the CT side for his team. Uh, the momentum was definitely in favor of Complexity, but Swag, back-to-back -back rounds, doing such a great job for his team, holding it holding it down. And... Uh, we're going to see about power taking full control of long at this point, and Cole is just kind of sitting back. They have AKs, no opt to work the picks, but they still have AKs across the board, but if they were to lose this round, they may actually be forced into an eco situation. So this round could be the round that ties the game back up at 11-all if I by power can take this one. Yeah, which would be really close, and I don't think Complexity would be too comfortable with that. This is what I talked about. Complexity, yes, they did get those three initial rounds after the pistol, but they really need to string rounds together. We saw it on Nuke. They got a couple on T-side, but they couldn't do them in succession. They couldn't exploit the weaknesses in I by Power's defense. Not to discredit I by Power, not saying that's all on Complexity. I by Power is very strong, obviously, and very aware of how to react in the situation and read Complexity very well. But they can't allow that tonight. They've got to get back-to-back -back rounds. They've got to pick up the gun game early. They've got to win.
pretty much everything they possibly can to force I by Power onto saves as often as possible. I mean, that goes without saying. As right now, Skadoodle's going to get Sean Gares on Catwalk. That's one down already. Sempus, perfect flash as Skadoodle takes him down as well. And make it a third onto nothing. Can he finally get an ace in return? Steel, no. He's going to take down Hiko. Anger drops Days, but Skadoodle still lurking here, looking for the fourth frag. And AZK is going to pick it up on Anger at middle. So the counter terrorists pick up one more round. 11 10 the score. And like you said, it's pretty much going to be 11 11 if this thing goes as it should statistically. Yeah, I mean, we've seen Cole make save rounds interesting. There was one round, I think the first eco of the match, actually, where they were able to get uh, a couple of AKs out of the deal and actually kind of challenge for the round in the end. Uh, but uh, we'll just have to see. I, I think this is pretty safely 11-11, though. I thought Power's been playing really great so far on the CT side. Scott's op has been on point. Swag holding down B. Things pretty much close for business. And so, yeah. I mean, I thought Colt was, was doing really well. They seem to have a minimum on their side, but I Power has, has been sharp on their CT side so far, especially Swag. Yeah, and I think, I mean, yes, the nuke, it's nuke. It's obviously very CT side. Yes, it was after roster changes, and like you said, I by Power is a little more willing to do the roster change. Sepis is going to get the early frag, though, here with that Deagle, but now Steel's going to go back into him, so that quickly gets resolved. But the point I was trying to make is, we saw it on that map. It was so critical how like how well I by Power played on the CT side as a defensive team, and they're showing off that tight, well-run system again tonight. As Two they guns aren't really call. leaving, leaving uh, any holes. You're right, though. Good call. Nothing picks up an AK. Anger picks up an M4A1. And they do have the bomb. The choice is theirs, but the interesting thing is, while well, Swag is watching onto Catwalk, so they can't really freely rotate back. They kind of have to stay committed to yeah. A. And Unless over you have there, nades, you can't hit A on this. Right, and, the and Skadoodles, Skadoodles right there with an... Oh, Skadoodles not peeking right now. They will get in, but... Oh, Skadoodle misses on the shot, I thought for sure. An easy one. He is going to flash out Oof. beautifully as he catches out that medium flash. That wasn't a right click, that was a right left click. So the medium uh, medium arm on him takes down one. Now it's all on nothing, and he gets the second one. Absolutely yeah. just... Like I said before the match, any any spot that's powerful with an op is OP with Skadoodle. And the thing is, is you can attack A into an op or playing any angle that's watching Cat without some type of smoke or flash. And as you saw, nothing was trying to smoke off the A platform so that he and Anger could cross without being insta-picked. But he missed the smoke. Now, Scott winds up missing his first shot. Uh, which actually kind of helped him out a bit, but in the end, he still returns it. So that's just a, such a dangerous angle to attack into when there's an op there. You really have to have some type of smoke or flash cover, and they didn't, and they wound up getting uh, getting destroyed. It's one of the hardest things to attack whenever you have to attack an op, or is that angle on Cat. Yeah, I completely agree. It's always Especially like a where there's kill. so many spots that he can uh, he can sit. It could like, be like car, just... it could be plaid, right. goose, well, it... He's... yeah. And there's two or three spots alone that just his head shows. So you've got to be dead accurate counter-peeking on him. Right now, we're back into the gun round. This this round is, of any so far for complexity, this is by far the most crucial. They need to win now to get back into this. They need to resolve the economy situation. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I can't even stress that enough. They're playing so passive. I don't want to say they're playing scared. They're playing calculated is more the way of putting it right now. Nothing's going to show early aggression here. Trying to push onto Skadoodle coming up cat. Steel already pushed down in pit. Pit. He gets flashed up uh, with a pop flash from over the top, I believe, but no one is actually coming through the doors. That's just to delay him. Hiko's actually playing passively on the other side of that, T side. But four on Catwalk. Can they overwhelm Skadoodle? Strength in numbers might be the best bet in, or in, in taking down that AWP, as we are going to see double flash come out, make it triple, and will they go? Nothing might lead the way here. Looks like he's going to actually try and bunny hop off and down into CT spawn if I was guessing where he has got it. Uh, I don't know, so tough. Skadoodle already gets one. They're slow, they're slow peeking. They can't do it, but Anger responds. There it is. That's the peak they needed. The double peak strategy. Overwhelm them, and they do, but Daze now resumes that exact position and takes down Anger. Hiko gets one in response into Steel, mm -hmm. but Daze switching back his aggression onto long A does get yet another frag. Three on two, our situation. Nothing gets one more, evening it out of two on two. Bomb will go down, but the time is out. They were too passive. They took too long, and they do get one more frag on Swag, and then AZK actually takes him down, so that's huge because they don't get any any money for running out of the round and they lose all their guns so yeah huge advantage i buy power right there yeah as you can see sempus only has 400 bucks and that's really the story of why they need to eco this round they could have maybe a four spot but that that pretty much killed it with that low money for sempus and honestly hiko really needed to get that kill on the days who was playing a ramp and that was really kind of the telltale sign they had very little time left days was able to stay alive on the a ramp and get a couple of frags and slow down the planning process for the t side and that really is what lost it for cole hiko missing that kill on days pretty much solidified it yeah, that's, man, 
That's a tragedy. That's a tragedy. Too passive. I said scared wasn't the word, but cautious and calculated was, and, and a little bit too cautious as they couldn't get in there and get that bomb down. Now they're on the eco, and they're just all uh, being... I don't know, trying to work as a team and find something, but Sean Garrett's already down. Hiko losing a lot of HP. Sent this down to 38. Nothing gets one frag on AZK. Any frag helps right now as they can try and get guns out of their hands. And they will get actually three, in, or probably two in total. As Swag drops down as well. Steal on the flank from Long, though, will take down Hiko. And it's all on Sempis. And he's going to drop down from Cat into CT, which is the clutches of Day's Talons. And that's going to be it. 13-11 now our score. Man, I don't know. Complexity yet again. Not getting it done on the T side. Not over yet, but man, they've got to tighten it up. Yeah, they need to win this round. Otherwise, it's probably game point for I buy power. Based on the money situation that the complexity is dealing with, if they were to lose this, this round's almost worth two for I buy power. So this, for all intents and purposes, is the most crucial round of the match. Man, Sean needs a pick at mid. He's found one, I think, all half, but that's it. And that was during a, a, a pistol or a, an eco round for the CTs. I think it, oh, it's aggression oh, that was around four. Yeah, three players there. It's one of those opportunities when you look at it from the overhead, you think, geez, there's three players there. You can get behind them on cat and take the site, but how do you know is the hard yeah. part. I mean, there's no way of knowing that. It's just all intuition as they continue spamming away at middle right now. Semp is trying to spot up anyone he can. Nothing happening at all so far this round. Everyone's still on 100 HP. A minute on the clock. I'm going to keep a track of that since we uh, ran out of time in one previous round. Dazed loses a little bit of HP there, down to 60. As nothing also drops down to 45, so they exchange a little bit of battle, but nothing coming out of it at all in terms of frags. i, I got to be careful when I say nothing, because I'm going to confuse you. As uh, oh Dazed now God. goes back into Sean Gears. Yes, he does get him. What a pop flash. Lined it up from that flash. Yeah, from the B side, supporting his teammates. Heiko, Heiko's going to take down Steel, but it's all going on at the other side right now. Skadoodle gets yet another off shot. Man, that guy's on fire this season. But a three-on-three -three situation resumes. Bomb in the hands of Anger. And it looks like they are actually going to address the B site. They haven't done so in a while, but this time might not be their best opportunity as Swag and Daze are both there. And we talked about Swag's ability to hold the site. He's also wielding an op. He's going to get two. Can he get three? No, he's going to drop down. Hiko's going to get that frag, but his damage has been done. And it is all on Hiko. We talked about this guy being perhaps the best player in North America. And right now, if ever a time is when he needs to show it. Can he get Daze? He's in good position to do so. Picks him up through the box. But he knows that Skadoodle is already in position as the flash comes over and he swaps out his op for an M4. He does get the bomb down, but it's obvious oh. where he is, but he gets the shot! He go! This is absolutely crucial. Complexity. If this were LAN, I'd get out of my chair and go hug the guy. That is unbelievable. That gets them back in the game. Yeah, uh, that single-handedly was the saving grace maybe for Complexity. Had they have lost that, it probably would have been a quick 15 to 11. Uh, so winning that round gives them something. It gives it gives them some momentum back. That was a great clutch from Hiko on B. That round was really back and forth though, because that pop flash that allowed Days to take Sean down at mid what was was really key there, and it actually gave Ava Power a lot of control. Uh, and I thought they were going to win the round based off of getting those initial picks, but in the end, Hiko comes up with a big one versus two. You couldn't have asked for a clutch at a better time from your teammate, and so that that was key. But I by Power already opening up with some aggression once again at long A with Steel and Skadoodle. So they do get the opening pick of this round, 13 to 12 situation, and now uh, an early man advantage for I by Power could could maybe put that momentum that complexity had uh, away. And the hard part of this is. For complexity, I buy power is so good on this defensive side. Swag, like you said, one of the best B players. And the way Skadoodle's holding down on Cat with that that op, where can you go? Like right now, they're not even playing a player mid for the counter terrorist because they know they've got the bomb sites. This is really tough for complexity. They've really got to work as a team, use grenades, and try and take sites. They are going to work it here in toward A right now. Skadoodle's going to get shot down by Anger. That is nice. crucial. That's going to open up the site. Nothing at long. Trying to avoid a flashbang from Steel, but he doesn't avoid the frag as Steel pops out with that M4. And that's crucial. That leaves him in a position to try and at least put some shots into the bomb planners. But the bomb will go down. Three on four plus bomb. This is tough. Complexity and also down on HP, it should be mentioned as well. 61, 43, and now nothing as Anger drops down to AZK. Semphis goes back in his steal, but Daze goes back in his Sean Gares. And Semphis, Team Canada, going to have to do Man. it. No, he cannot. Daze gets the frag over the box, and I by Power gets one more. They are facing overtime point already. 14, 12, going to be our score. Yeah. And it looks like it might actually. Uh, I don't know. If they're... And I didn't really talk about this, but it was actually the same situation this round. Cole had to win to be able to buy this round. Uh, they're going to have to either force buy Galil or something.
something or they're going to have to save this round and give Ibarra the game point and play for the OT. Uh, I emphasized that a couple of rounds ago. I didn't really emphasize it last time around because there was more important first to fry, in my opinion, from an, an analyst perspective. But it looks like they are going to vote for the four spy on Galil. So they do not want to allow Ibarra to get game point without a contest. So basically, this is the match for all intents and purposes. I mean, they'll be able to force buy Galil's again in the final if they lose here, but this is really, this is for all the marbles right here, pretty much. And Swag's gonna open it up at middle, getting one frag, missing on the second one with that op, and that might mean they can push in on him, but Skadoodle also in good position. Swag's gonna repeek, take down Sephis, oh and God. Anger, who manages to get Skadoodle just before that, but never mind, because the damage is absolutely in favor of I by power right now. Three on two, the situation, Hiko on 58 HP, so uh, about even if Swag, I guess, he's on 53, but holding on to that op, he is doing work right now. As, uh, man, Swag already over 30 bomb. He's got 31 right now. He has just played so aggressive and so well on this uh, B side, or CT side, pardon me, over at the B site. And he's already spotted up one rotating back through CT spawn. That's Sean Gares. In fact, he did lag him. He's got him down to 20 HP. So. Lag him. I'll lag him. Lego, bro. Lego my ego. As Swag now still... I talked about how he was playing in B and they weren't really putting anyone mid. Now it's all middle. He's done all the work there. And Daze is going to close out on Hiko. And there it is. Sean Gares to fall. And it will be a save for match points. So I buy power. Might sneak away with this one. And move on and improve to 7-2. and two. But man, Complexity, if that is the case, is going to have a hell of a time trying to make it just through to land. As they will now be 4-5 and five on this season. I won't count my chickens before they hatch. Or whatever the saying is. But, uh... Yeah, looking that way for sure. Yeah, I mean, this is the last round here. Pretty likely that uh, Cole won't be able to win. They, they only have head armor and upgraded pistols and very few grenades. And Swag already opening up with a pick through the smoke on the Sean Gare. Swag has been, like, damn near clairvoyant the second half as far as uh, how he's been playing. And here comes the B-Rush. AZK able to get one. And so this is pretty much cleanup crew as he pulls out the USP. Picks up two more. So uh, three kills here for AZK. Swag will finish the match with that op. He actually ends the game with 33 frags and 15 deaths. So over uh, a two KDR. I think I buy power. And I know Complexity's had the uh, momentum heading into the matches at the majors, and they've done better getting out of group stages both times and, and making some good cases. In fact, one of only two teams, including Virtus Pro, to take a match off of NIP or take a map off of NIP at EMS. I think I bought Powers in an even stronger spot with the addition of Steel and Spag. These, these guys look insanely good on the CT side right now. That was just textbook. Um, so with that, thank you all so much for tuning in on behalf of ESEA and BenQ. 8,500 people were uh, the peak that I saw, and I know a lot of you guys are European, so thank you so much for staying up late. It's absolutely awesome that you I guys are supporting the North American scene and Counter-Strike in general. Things are on the move. Things are on the rise. We talked about it in the pregame. Lots of North American grassroots lands coming up and big things in general with all the majors that we've had. Hopefully that will continue. Uh, my name is Sadokis, Matthew Sadokis, Trivet, alongside me for Keller Commentary, and all our lovely analysis was Dustin Dust. More uh, we are going to have a post-game interview. I don't know. I think they just whispered in my ear who that was, but I'm busy talking and didn't hear them. Did you hear, Dustin? Uh, I'm trying to get one of them in here right now. Okay, so we will have a post-game interview from the wing side of, uh, of I Buy Power. So stay with us in just one second. Uh, congratulations to those of you who won skins. I lost skins on my only bet that I made so far this year, so I didn't put any down on this one, and this one was way too close to call, to be honest. So the return.